To send men to the moon, you need more than booster rockets. Among other things, Tracy Smith tells us, you need the skills of people working out of the spotlight, but uniquely suited to the job. Right now, after seeing it happen, knowing that it happened, it still seems like a dream. Even for the people who actually did it, the idea of walking on the moon is still a little hard to comprehend. Anytime you felt a little bit homesick, you could just look up and see the Earth hanging over the South Massif. So it was really a spectacular place to be. That's remarkable, looking up and seeing the Earth. Oh, it's only 250,000 miles away, so <laughs> <laughs> that's home. In 1972, Harrison Jack Schmidt of Apollo 17 became the last man to set foot on the moon. You're one of 12 people ever who stood on the moon. Can you get your head around that? Well, not really. I was honored and privileged to be part of the Apollo program. But like everyone else who was part of the Apollo program, we happened to be at the right place at the right time with an extraordinarily strong motivation to succeed. And here it looks as if they're about to come out. And they were motivated. From the astronauts waving goodbye on their way to the history books to the chain-smoking guys in mission control. But back in places where the TV cameras didn't always go, a small army of women was working just as hard at jobs that were just as important. We all know this image of Buzz Aldrin in his spacesuit, but how that suit was made is a story in itself. Let's let our friend Andy Astronaut demonstrate the hazards lunar explorers will encounter. Before man could take a giant leap, they needed to solve a few giant problems. In the near vacuum of space, the gases within his body would immediately expand. Without the right spacesuit, an astronaut could blow up like a balloon, or burn up, or maybe get drilled by a micrometeorite. When NASA needed a new moon suit, big government contractors like Lytton Industries and Hamilton Standard made stiff, bulky spacesuit prototypes that often looked like a cross between Sir Galahad and Buzz Lightyear. To infinity and beyond! What NASA needed was something more flexible, and they found out that no one knew flexible like the people who made these. Pretty face, but uh-oh, midriff bulge. Her midriff bulge is showing. See the difference before and after you change to Playtex Living Long Line Bra. Yep, Playtex formerly known as the International Latex Corporation, ILC, of Dover, Delaware. The girdle company wasn't nearly as big as the other suit makers, but they had some pretty radical ideas. In 1967, ILC came up with a softer, more flexible spacesuit made almost entirely of fabric, and then shot this film at a local high school with an employee putting the suit through its paces. In the end, the company won the contract for the Apollo suits and gave some of their bra-making seamstresses a brand new assignment. Did they tell you initially you're going to be sewing spacesuits? They didn't tell me a thing. They just brought me over here. <laughs> so from bras and girdles to spacesuits. Little pieces like this, the big pieces like this. <laughs> Anna Lee Minner, Ruth Anna Ratledge, Lily Elliott, and Joanne Thompson were four of the women who made the suits that went to the moon. Women, it turns out, had the perfect touch, according to ILC project manager Homer Ream. The people that sewed the suits were all women. Is That's that correct. because? Agility. And it took plenty of agility. Each suit was 21 layers of gossamer thin fabric, sewn to a precise tolerance of 1 64th of an inch, on a sewing machine your grandmother might have used. So our sewing shop didn't go like commercial sewing shops. It went kloop, 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 because we were interested in accuracy. In other words, there was no room for any mistakes. I went home on many a night and cried because I knew I couldn't do it. Why'd you think that? Because I was scared. Scared of? I was scared. This was a person's life this depended on. In fact, they never forgot that their work could be the difference between victory and tragedy. They took this job very seriously. They did. I mean, they may have had the most important job of all, frankly. Basil Hero is the author of The Mission of a Lifetime. 
As Neil Armstrong said, those space suits were mini spacecraft. You were one pinprick away from death. If those suits failed, that was it. You were done. So the women put their hearts into it. Lily Elliott cut the patterns. As you were sewing, did you have in your minds where this was going, the responsibility of that? I think right at the first, no. But later on, you know, when you had all these inspections going on, it kind of clicked in your head, okay, you know, I got to do this right. This is a CBS News special report. And then the job got even tougher. America's first three Apollo astronauts were trapped and killed by a flash fire that swept their moonship early tonight at Cape Kennedy in Florida. It had happened during a test when a spark in the capsule's pure oxygen atmosphere triggered an inferno from which there was no escape. This is a time for great sadness, national sadness, but it's also a time for courage. And if that sounds trite, I'll change the words to guts. In the months that followed, NASA engineers put their grief aside and made the spacecraft safer. ILC also revamped the suits to take out anything that could burn. And the inspections there could be brutal. If one of the women left so much as a stray pin in the finished suit, there'd be hell to pay. So if you had a pin in your spacesuit, what happened? You got stuck with it. I guess you learn your lesson that way. Thank God it wasn't me. <laughs> The astronauts themselves were familiar faces as their suits were made, both in person for fittings and on the signed face cards that hung from every suit, a reminder that the astronauts were, indeed, betting their lives on the skilled hands at ILC. We would have astronauts come in and thank us, and that was a real boost. It made a connection there that you didn't forget. And we're getting a picture on the TV. And on July 20th, 1969, when the big moment finally arrived, the women of International Latex held their breath. Once they started down the ladder and he put his foot on the, earth, on the moon, um, that, that was a pinnacle of watching something that you've helped do. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Where was your heart in that moment? In my throat. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm curious, was there an inner dialogue going on, a voice in your head? Oh my, I wonder if that's going to hold. <laughs> oh my, I wonder if this is going to be all right. I hope that stitch didn't pop. <laughs> Look at that. Mm -hmm. Watching from Mission Control, Homer Ream just wanted it to be over, especially when Buzz Aldrin turned a moon walk into a moon sprint. Things are getting get pretty frisky up there. I'm saying to myself, corral that guy, lock him up and get him up the ladder. It's a success. Let's declare it a success and go inside. <laughs> you wanted Buzz Aldrin to stop I running. I wanted Buzz Aldrin to stop running around and get up the ladder. So-called kangaroo hop. In fact, none of the spacesuits failed. Not once, on the first moon mission or the last. I was strolling on the moon one day. If you really listen to all of the audio of the mission, every once in a while you'll hear a, a song. You lapse into song. I think that's pretty cool. I was having a great time. Were you able to enjoy yourself? I really did. The whole time I was up there. All right, that's a neat way to travel. Isn't that great? She knows everything about you. Jack Schmidt turned 84 this month and he still loves sharing his lunar experience. I'd like to crawl back in there, but it doesn't look like they want me to. <laughs> and some of the ladies who sewed his suit would like back in, too. We enjoyed every bit of it, every stitch. I would do it all over again if I could. You'd still like to be doing it. Yes, I love it. <laughs> well, I'm still amazed, <laughs> but it was, it was great. They're all retired now, but ILC is still making spacesuits. And who knows, an ILC suit might one day go to Mars. But it all began with Apollo 11, when a small group of dedicated women back on Earth helped bring us all just a little closer to the heavens. I think they're taking pictures of each other with a Hasselblad camera. The first tourists on the moon.